Hello there, it's Dr. Shipperfield from Marsbury Science. Today we'll be doing a required practical where we are going to identify the concentration of glucose that is in three samples of urine. We don't know the glucose concentration in them, that is an unknown. So we're going to have to use techniques to work out the concentration of glucose in these samples. We should be producing a dilution series of known glucose concentrations, producing from that a calibration curve uh, as a graph, and then using the graph to identify the concentration of our urine samples. This might have applications in identifying if someone has high levels of glucose in their urine for a long period of time, which might uh, indicate a diagnosis of diabetes. So we'll start by setting up the urine samples. I've already set up samples for Dick and Harry, so I'm gonna set up a sample for Tom now to show you how to do that. So we have our urine sample here. We need a test tube a beaker so that we can easily get hold of our urine and decant it from the conical flask into the beaker so we can then measure it out with a syringe so for accurate measurements of two millilitres. Uh, we also need some Benedict solution. You might remember Benedict solution is a test for a reducing sugar. This is actually slightly different to the Benedict you would have come across before. It is called quantitative Benedict solution. In the presence of sugar or a reducing sugar such as glucose, this does not produce the normal range of colour changes you'll be familiar with, going from uh, blue, which would be a negative result, through to brick red, which would be a strong positive result for glucose. This actually uh, produces a white precipitate and the blue colour will fade. That effect is greater the stronger the concentration of glucose. And we'll be able to measure that using a colorimeter, which we shall do later in the experiment. So we need to Give this a good shake, make sure it's fully suspended. Decant some of our urine into a beaker. Measure out carefully two millilitres of urine. Checking it is accurate uh, two millilitre measurement into a test tube, carefully labelled with the letter T for Tom. We then add an equal volume of quantitative Benedicts. As you can see, I now have my three urine samples set up. The next stage is to set up a series of known glucose concentrations making a dilution series from a concentration of 10 millimolar glucose. So we'll now move on to show you how to do that. So we have our stock solution of 10 millimoles per decimeter cubed of glucose. We need to make a dilution series of this to produce six test tubes, each of a known concentration of glucose. So give it a good shake, make sure it is fully resuspended. We'll decant some glucose into a beaker. So it's easier to, to use a syringe to get the glucose. You need to make up six test tubes, each with two millilitres of glucose in them. One test tube will have a full concentration, 10 millimoles per decimeter cubed of glucose, and then each test tube will then have different concentrations down to eight, six, four, two, and zero millimoles uh, per decimeter cubed of glucose. I'll show you how to set up one of these. Uh, I've chosen uh, one of the concentrations from the middle to show you how I've set this up, uh, and I've set all the other ones up previously. So we'll set up the uh, eight millimole per decimeter cubed of glucose. So I'm gonna mark my test tube with an eight. We need 1.6 mil milliliters of glucose. So again, I'm gonna carefully measure this out using a syringe. Now I have two syringes in this beaker. You need to think carefully about which syringe you would choose to measure out this volume. I have a two mil syringe and a one mil syringe. So using a two mil syringe, you get 1.6 milliliters of glucose. We now need to dilute the glucose with some distilled water. So I have a big beaker of distilled water here. Again, I've got two syringes, a two mil syringe and a one mil syringe. This time I'm gonna use the one mil syringe to uh, carefully measure up 0.4 milliliters of distilled water. Making a total volume of two milliliters. 
As with the urine samples, we have now two millilitres of glucose solution. We're going to add two millilitres, uh, an identical volume of quantitative Bendix solution. I've now made up all my solutions, uh, so the zero millimolar per decimeter cubed of glucose, all the way up to 10 millimoles per decimeter cubed of glucose. Uh, all of them have got quantitative Benedict solution added to them. Just like with the traditional Benedict test, we won't see any color change or nothing will happen unless we heat the test tubes. So we now need to bring it in a water bath. So we now have a water bath, a large beaker of water from a recently boiled kettle. And we need to place all of our tubes that we've set up into this water bath for a time of four minutes. So there are the urine samples. Here are my samples of known glucose concentration. And we start the timer for four minutes. So we're now well into our four minutes. So you can see here, very little color changes occurred. Uh, unlike the traditional Benedict's test, we're not gonna get the range of color changes we see with, this is a quantitative Benedict solution. But we should be getting a white precipitate formed and should be getting some of the blue color decolorizing, so a reduction in the, in the blue color. And we can measure that with a colorimeter, but I often find there's no real visible change to the naked eye. So our four minutes are now up. We need to allow our test tubes to cool. So I'm gonna move them to the water bath. So you can see in this sample, there is a sort of swirls of white cloudiness within this tube. That is the white precipitate that's formed as part uh, of the Benedict's test here using the quantitative Benedict's solution. They're my urine samples. So we now have our known glucose concentration samples here. Again, starting at zero millimoles per decimeter cubed, up to 10 millimoles per decimeter cubed. And you hopefully can see, as we move from the low to the highest concentration, we have uh, an increased level of white precipitate. That is the result we'd expect to see with a quantitative Benedict solution. We now need to get quantitative data using a colorimeter. We've got here our colorimeter. This is one where you can directly put a test tube in and measure the absorbance of light. So you might see the setting is on absorbance. So we're measuring the absorbance of light by the samples in the test tube. Uh, so how much light can pass through the sample and how much light is actually being absorbed, uh, scattered by the sample. So it's not reaching the, the detector in the colorimeter, giving us a, a number readout, a quantitative data readout of how, how cloudy these samples are. Now I've set this colorimeter to a red filter. The reason I've chosen a red filter is that we have a blue solution. Blue solutions are blue because they're absorbing all other wavelengths of light, all other colors of light. If we want to see a change in absorbance reading, we need to choose a filter of the complementary color. In this case, the best color filter I had was a red filter. The first thing we're gonna do is put in a reference sample or blank. This is gonna be my zero millimoles per decimeter cubed of glucose. Put this in. Uh, in this machine, press R for reference, and it is reading a reading of 0, 0.00 absorbance. So I'm telling the machine there is no absorbance of light through this sample, hence the machine is now uh, blanked. So having blanked the machine or put in a reference sample, we're now going to start testing our samples of known glucose concentrations. We've got two millimoles per centimeter cubed here. Give it a little shake, in it goes, and test the sample. The two millimolar per decimeter cubed concentration of glucose has a reading of 0.06 absorbance. I'm now gonna quickly take the remaining measurements. So now having measured all of my known glucose concentration samples, got a quantitative readout of light absorbance, we have to now measure the absorbance readings of the unknown urine samples. Start to get a quantitative reading that can allow us to calculate what concentration of glucose is in those samples. Uh, I'll measure the sample from Tom, give it a good shape before we put it in. And the result is 0.11 absorbance. Measure the next sample from Dick. Absorbance reading of 0.36. And finally, the urine sample from Harry, a reading of 0.04. So having gained those readings, We'll have to plot a graph of our known glucose concentrations and their absorbance readings. So known glucose concentrations uh, along the x-axis, absorbance readings up the y-axis. 
We then plot a calibration curve from that data. And using that calibration curve, we can take the absorbance readings from our urine samples and read them off the graph from the absorbance readings across the line of best fit down to the x-axis. And the reading on the x-axis will give us an estimate of the concentration of glucose found in the urine.